previous video, I discussed two particular reasons we who love and follow Jesus as our Lord need the Holy Spirit. He keeps transforming us to become more like our Lord Jesus during our pilgrimage to our salvation. And he imparts to us the grace and spiritual power to do our Father's will. In this video, I'll discuss how our Father has shown in both Testaments that he seeks to transform those who belong to him. His transforming process is called circumcision of the heart. So let's first look into the Older Testament to see our Father's view of our transformation. Moses commanded the Israelites to love and serve God with all their heart and soul. And the prophet knew that for them to do this, they needed a heart transformation. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. Moses tells the Israelites that after they have entered the promised land and have repented for sinning, God will do his part in this necessary inner transformation process. He intends for Israel to love him wholeheartedly. The Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul and live. In the Newer Testament, Paul builds on the same theme of heart circumcision for those who put their trust in Jesus. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul clearly emphasizes the inward heart circumcision which is in the spirit. In Christ, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. In both Testaments, circumcision means something is being cut away, whether for the Israelites or for us who follow Jesus. Throughout our pilgrimage to our salvation, the indwelling spirit of our Lord continues to circumcise our hearts. As we mature in Christ, we're better able to discern attitudes and actions we may not have considered sinful earlier in our spiritual walk. Now we repent more quickly as the Holy Spirit convicts us. Paul informs us of an interesting sequence. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The physical first, then the natural. So how does the sequence of the natural first and then the spiritual apply to circumcising our hearts? <laughs> In the physical realm, the medical community agrees that the benefits of male circumcision outweigh the risk. Circumcision lowers a man's risk for urinary tract infections and penile cancer. It also lowers the risk of cervical cancer in a man's wife. Circumcision is usually done within 48 hours of a baby's birth. The later in life a man is circumcised, the far greater the chance for complications and far greater is the pain level. Let's compare physical circumcision with heart circumcision. Right after you're born again, the sooner you actively cooperate with the Holy Spirit to circumcise your attitudes, motives, and behaviors, the easier it is to hear and cooperate with the Spirit 
throughout your pilgrimage to your salvation. The longer you resist by quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit, the more painful it is to circumcise a self-willed, calloused heart. It's evident in both Testaments that our Father seeks to be glorified through those who belong to his family, whether the Israelites and the Hebrew Scriptures or we who follow Jesus as our Lord. This transformation process is a vital reason the Holy Spirit indwells inside of us. None of us is the best judge of our own motives, but the Spirit of our Lord is. And he's the one who circumcises the things in us that are sinful and unlike our Lord Jesus. My concern for you is that maybe you aren't convicted of just how dark your own heart motives may be. We can all too easily rationalize our goals and our values because they seem good to us. But if they aren't pleasing to our Father, then they are sin. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Because of our inherited sin nature, we are deceitfully predisposed to think we're pretty good. We also want control of having all our desires met. Before we were born again, we were the God of our own lives, and that attitude can carry over even after we've become Christians. Many in Christianity resist the circumcising work of the Holy Spirit. They continue to see themselves as their own sovereign suzerain. They can find Jesus to the role of being their savior. God the Father is their personal vassal to meet all their wants and desires. These three expressions of resisting the Holy Spirit are actually evidences of self-idolatry. They're far more common in Christian circles than in people who see themselves as grateful vassals of our Lord and are resolute in having their hearts circumcised. The transformation from unbeliever to beloved slave servant vassal of our sovereign Susan Father takes place in the inside. Through the Holy Spirit's sanctifying work, your heart humility expands within you as you increasingly desire to live as a transformed slave servant of your beloved Lord. Let me tie together what I've discussed by using an analogy of our God as the divine potter. If you know anything about shaping clay, you know that being a potter is a very hands-on interactive experience. The potter just doesn't look at the lump of clay and say, be a pot. There is a relationship between the potter and the clay. The potter has the right to do to the pot, our lives, whatever he wants to do. I trust that you and I both want to be a pot that's been shaped and fired so we can be useful to our Lord for noble purposes.